Hello folks, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be discussing 11 ways to reclaim your power after a narcissistically abusive relationship. Number one, get help. What you would ideally want if you're going to reach out for help is to get coaching or counseling from a specialist who understands narcissistic abuse and all of its symptoms and how to resolve them inside out. What the narcissist wants you to do is to stay alone is to isolate, is to be afraid of other people, is to be nervous and to ruminate and obsess over them. You need to get coaching. You need a strong therapeutic intervention from somebody who can pick you up and guide you in the right direction. So make sure you do that as quickly as possible. Number two, you need to focus on breaking the trauma bond. This human being has power over you for no other reason other than that they hurt you. The power they have over you is commensurate with the amount of hurt they delivered to you. We won't get into why now. There are neurobiological reasons for this. Let's say it's a software fault or a wetware fault in our evolutionary process. A person who's caused us a tremendous amount of pain, the brain, the central nervous system assigns an awful lot of significance to, and we can confuse that significance with love or obsession or other strong feelings of veneration. So you must break the trauma bond. Number three, you have to deal directly with the obsession. You have to deal with the obsessive thoughts that you're thinking and you have to challenge them. You have to break them. This takes disciplined and consistent action over time. You cannot let your thoughts run away with you because these are the thoughts of a traumatized person. Narcissistically abused thoughts run in one direction and they tend to lead the sufferer back to the abuser to answer the questions that are obsessing the sufferer. So through the pain, through the deception, through the betrayal, it creates an awful lot of intrigue, it creates an awful lot of obsession and fascination, where your brain is going, I have all this pain, all of this confusion, all of this betrayal, while the person who did it is that person over there. If they're the person who was the cause of the problem, surely they'll be the solution as well. It's faulty reasoning, but you can see how the brain comes to that conclusion. We cannot afford to do that. So you have to deal with the obsessive uh, and, and compulsive, the obsessive compulsive thoughts directly. Number four, for now, accept the power that this situation and this person has had over you. Try not to respond with ego. Try not to go into narcissistic defense and be defiant, be like, no, they didn't affect me, they didn't hurt me, they didn't do this to me, I'm taking my power back, slow down. You can get to that point authentically after a period of time through coaching and through therapeutic intervention, you will get there. But for now, be humble, accept that you're in pain. Say, I am in pain, this is not what I signed up for, this person deceived me and now I'm very hurt, I'm very sad, I'm very angry. I'm very, very disappointed. This person hurt me. This person did effectively deceive me. What can happen after a narcissistic relationship is we can start responding narcissistically because we're trained to do that, where we want to pull out of that and we want to find a much calmer, more adult, more transcendent response. We want to transcend the problem. We don't want to remain in an ego battle to see who's going to win. It doesn't matter who's going to win because this isn't a game. This is your life. Number five, do connect with other people. Narcissistic abuse tends to lead us towards self-isolation. Self-isolation, of course, then breeds loneliness. Loneliness breeds despair and puts you in a poor physiological state to be able to cope with your coaching, to be able to deal with your therapy in an authentic way and in order to heal. So you must be connected with others. You don't have to be connected with other human beings on the subject of narcissism. You can connect with other human beings on the subject of football, ping pong, politics, orchards, apples, that's all I got in, in, in the room with me. Whatever you want, talk about anything, connect with them about anything. Just respect the authentic human connection and be humble again, like be grateful for the chance to just sit and talk to somebody about anything. There's no such thing as small talk. There's no such thing as, uh, you know, talking about things that don't matter. The fact that they're there and you're there we're human beings, we need this connection. Be grateful, appreciate it, and do connect with other humans. Number six, go some length to reclaim your physical health. Reclaim your physical health, get physically stronger now. If you need to hire a personal trainer, hire a personal trainer. If you need to review your diet, do that. If you need to change your sleep cycle, your alcohol and caffeine consumption, whatever it is, focus and give time 
sacrifice for your physical health. Sacrifice means you're gonna give up time, you're gonna give up money, you're gonna give up things you value in the short term for long-term gain. Do it, show yourself that you respect yourself, show yourself that you respect this meat suit that your consciousness is running around in, take care of it, take care of yourself, and you'll feel good, you'll feel stronger, and you'll feel more secure. Number seven, do follow some kind of a discipline. I'm not a, a priest or a preacher, so I don't wanna tell you what discipline to follow, but your daily life, whilst you're in an awful lot of pain after narcissistic abuse, should be one of discipline. It should be one of timetables and lists. You don't have to live like this for the rest of your life. If you're a highly artistic, open person who values chaos, I respect that. But for this period of time, whilst you're recovering, maybe give it 30 days of discipline, of consistency, of writing lists, so you know what time you're gonna wake up, you know what time you're gonna go to bed, you even plan your meal times, so that you're taking care of yourself, and it means it's less likely that you're gonna go into a free fall. It's less likely that you're gonna spend hours scrolling social media for no reason, numbing out or consuming alcohol or caffeine or, or other products that you don't really need, it means it's less likely that you're gonna ruminate on the past. This discipline should include the discipline of taking care of your physical health and of connecting with others. Yes, there will be days where all you wanna do is sit by yourself. I understand, I get it. But there are times when you should push outside of your comfort zone a little bit and go and connect with other people again. Number eight, if you're of a mind to do it, create, write draw, go back to whatever artistry you've ever had in your life. For some people it's martial arts, for some people it's dance, for some people it's literally writing or drawing or making music, singing, writing songs, whatever it is. Put your pain into the creative process. Wonderful alchemical transformations that can take you far beyond any therapeutic, therapeutic process ever could can come out of that space. Please do it. Um, everybody, and I mean everybody, including myself who's tried it, reports wonderful uh, transformations and wonderful leaps forward in their healing process. So give the time to that as well. Number nine, please become future focused. It's a discipline. We have to, with daily discipline, consistent action, push our brains to focus on the future and what will be and what we do want, not the past and what's already happened and what we didn't want and what hurt us. What pleasure, what opportunities, what joy, what purpose, what meaning can we construct in the future? And let that be just as weighty, if not more weighty, with more gravity than all of the stuff that has already happened in the past. You were unconscious when these things happened. You wouldn't let this happen again. Let yourself off the hook and say, okay, I made a mistake. I won't make that mistake again. Move forward into your future. You have a right to do that. Number 10. Now is a great opportunity to go back and to redevelop your spirituality, to redevelop your philosophy. You can do this in an orthodox way if that's what feels good to you. If going back to your original roots, be it in Islam or Judaism or Bud Buddhism or Hinduism, or whatever it was, if that's your calling, then do that. If you want something that is a little bit more of a hybrid, that's a little bit more eclectic or a little bit more mystical, then do that but connect with your spirituality, reconnect with your own personal philosophy. Try and answer basic philosophical questions now. What is good? Why is the thing that we say is good? What makes it good? What is bad? What is evil? Why is evil evil? How should a person live their lives? What is the meaning of life? What is the nature of this reality? Not so that you can come up with answers, you won't. And if you do, they'll be daft and dogmatic as everybody's answers are daft and dogmatic throughout all of human history have been. But it's the ability to wrestle with these big questions and to grow those muscles and to feel comfortable with them, you will find your anxiety and your depression goes down. Number 11, finally, don't do anything symbolically. Don't engage in performative gestures. Don't do things to prove something to your ex. You know, you're gonna do some flex on social media to make them think this or make them think that, or you're gonna tell all your friends you're doing this and going on this holiday so that it gets back to them to try and manipulate their thoughts about you. Give up, be authentic, transcend this situation authentically as a real human being with humility, engaged in your own spirituality, with your own connection with self, with your own connection with God, if you like the word God, universe, reality, whatever words you wanna use. We all know what we're talking about connect with that and move forward from that place in an authentic way. 
and you will reclaim your power from this situation. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like more information about how to overcome narcissistically abusive relationships, we have a course for you called Unplug from the Matrix of Narcissistic Abuse. It's available from this link here.